Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be doing some watercoloring with a stencil. This is the Star Medallion stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and it's a stencil that I just designed for them, and it's been just released. So I'm using some spray adhesive from Krylon. This is some repositionable adhesive, and I'm using this in particular because it's going to stick down onto my watercolor paper and create a little bit of a seal. So I'll be able to get a fairly clean watercolored image. So I'm using some Strathmore watercolor paper and I'm also using the 12 pearl color set from Fine Tech. I'm adding some drops of water in each of the colors I'll be using and then I'll start picking up colors with my paintbrush. So uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to try out this technique in particular is because I've always wondered would it be possible to watercolor with a stencil and when I've tried it in the past I haven't had good results. Um, the watercolor paint seeps under the stencil and it kind of mixes with every of uh, all the other areas around it, it and it becomes a little bit of a mess. But I saw someone online use a repositionable adhesive on a stencil and I thought it would work with this and it does. So one of the reasons why I'm able to get such intricate areas on this is because the fine tech paints are rather thick. Um, I am going to do another test with some more loose watery water watercolors but I did want to still show you this kind of playtime example that I was working on before I created the card for today because I thought this turned out really, really cool even though I don't have a finished card example for you. So one thing I did want to know is when you use that spray adhesive, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area, um, maybe with a fan on or something. I had my uh, craft room door open and the window open and fans going when I was using it. And I didn't spray for very long. It was just for maybe seven to 10 seconds and it cleared out the room fairly easy. I didn't have any problem with it. So you can see that the detail is pretty good. I think especially for a hand painted design, it looks pretty good. So I did leave some watercolor paint on the stencil and I was able to clean that off with just some warm soapy water and a soft brush. And I just brushed that off the stencil and I actually discovered that the adhesive stayed on the stencil. It wasn't quite as sticky as it was before, but I am still using that same stencil. I've just washed it with some clean water and then I'm going to adhere it down onto this watercolor paper and create another background. So I didn't have to spray any more adhesive that stayed sticky. So I'm kind of impressed with how well that repositionable adhesive worked. So this time I taped down my watercolor piece and then put the stencil down onto the paper. And I'm going to just paint over the entire area creating sort of like a color fading wash starting out with that Caribbean green color. And I'm making sure that I'm pressing that brush into the areas of the stencil as I go over it. Because if you just glide over it quickly, it's really not going to leave much color in those little tiny areas. So you do have to sort of work with it and try to um, manipulate the watercolor into those areas. So I've moved on to this sapphire blue color. And then I'm going to grab some purple and I'm going to uh, transition into a purple shade. So I'm using these paints very loose with lots of water, but if you wanted to paint this with slightly thicker paint like I did before, you definitely could. This reddish violet color was a little thicker. It had a little more paint to it. So you can see it went on a little bit darker. And uh, same with this red shade. And then I'm going to go to this gold color and just kind of fade that out near the bottom. It turns into a little bit of an orange. I thought it worked well with this kind of color scheme. So the trick to making sure you don't have any of the watercolor seep under the stencil is to make sure that it's completely dry before you remove the stencil. And I sped up the process by using a heat tool, but you could definitely just let this air dry. In fact, I think I'll do some more experimenting and let it air dry and see if I get even better results. So you can see some of the areas did seep under the stencil, but I think if I would have sprayed some additional repositionable adhesive, I think it would have had an even tighter seal uh, next up to that paper, and I probably wouldn't have had anything bleed under those edges. 
So I'm using the edge of an acrylic block and some more paint and just splattering on some dots onto my painting here. I'm going to use this pearl white color just to add a little more sheen and I'll go ahead and splatter that on here. Once again I want this to be completely dry before I move on so I'm hitting it with my heat tool. And then here are my two backgrounds that I made using that same stencil and the same paints. They really look quite different I think. So then I took this heart die and it actually coordinates with that stamp set that's on screen but I just wanted the heart shape. So I ran that through my Big Shot machine using my background and then I trimmed the background down to the exact size of a card front. So this ended up being four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then I took some Nina Solarite cardstock and I cut a piece that was four and a quarter wide and six inches tall. This allows me a half inch kind of area to adhere these two pieces together to create the card front. So I'm going to fold that over and then I'm going to position that card front where it will eventually be and I'm going to take my pencil and trace that heart shape onto the inside of the card. And then I'm going to take some gold paint, that same gold paint that I used on the rest of the card, and I'm just going to paint this heart shape on the inside of the card. Now that's a Nina Solar White cardstock. It wasn't watercolor paper, but you could definitely use watercolor paper if you wanted to. I then took the Hey Love dies or die set from Simon Says Stamp. And I'm just using the second half of the phrase. It's just going to say love. And I put adhesive. In this case, I'm using some Ranger Multimedia Matte Adhesive. And I put that on both ends of the love word so that it could be uh, adhered to either side of that heart window. Then use some Tombow Extreme Adhesive on the flap for the inside of the card. And I positioned that heart right over the exact gold area and then tucked that flap underneath and then pressed down. And that way I was able to get an exact lineup with that heart window and the gold heart on the inside of the card. So that card is completely finished. I wanted to let you know that there are lots of new products that were just released at Simon Says Stamp. And this video and blog post over at my blog are part of a blog hop. So if you'd like to see even more inspiration and have lots more chances to win giveaway prizes from Simon Says Stamp, please head over there. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.